Hello, my front porch friend. Well, I'm out at the rock hole today. It just really doesn't get much prettier than this. It's just you and me and this big white fish right here. Palmer, go get it. There he goes. There he goes. All right. Hopefully you and I will have a few minutes to talk because I've been praying for you today. And as I was praying for you, I was just asking the Lord this morning, Lord, what is your word, your word to my friend today? And he answered me immediately. That is my favorite. <laughs> so to right now, if you're watching this and you have just lately felt overwhelmed with the pressures of this life that has just felt like lately this heavy weight that's left you drained and depleted and discouraged, then you're the one this word is for. The Lord gave me your word by reminding me of an encounter that my sister had with him. Now, I haven't even thought about this in some time. Now, I only have one sister, Janet, who is married to an incredible man of God, pastor named Skip. They've pastored now for probably, wow, 45 plus years. And this happened years ago when they were pastoring this church. And they were just going through a really challenging season in the church. They'd been really hurt by people and, and, and really the pressure of it all was just... Uh, about more than they felt like they could take. Enough that they had decided to uh, call a few friends in to pray with them. And Janet and Skip, the two of them, had prayed for three nights in a row. Now, I called her today just to say, tell me exactly the details of this because I've heard this word for somebody. She said, we had prayed for three nights all night long. But on the third night, about three o'clock in the morning, she said. She said that she and Skip were both in the living room in prayer. She said Skip was just lying face down. And she said he had just been there, you know, for hours. And he, and he was just face down, flat on his face on the floor. And Janet said, I knelt down beside him and I was just praying for him, just praying for him. And Skip was, was down there like this with his face down, just weeping and weeping and praying and praying. And she, Janet said, all of a sudden, she said, I looked over toward the dining room and she said, when I did, I saw him, Jesus. She said he was standing in the doorway of the dining room. And she said what she noticed first that was so striking after she got over the shock, she said that she was looking at Jesus. She said she immediately noticed he had the biggest smile on his face. She said he didn't look worried about anything. She said it was like a, a full grin and she said, now Skip was over here still just with his face down, just sobbing, sobbing on the floor. She said, Jesus walks through the dining room into the living room. He comes over. He looks over at, down at Skip and he looks to Janet and he bends down and he says to Janet, tell Skip I've come to take his burden. <laughs> oh, my friend. I believe today, I am to be to you what Janet was that day to Skip. I believe that today, I'm the one that's supposed to come and tell you, Jesus has come to take your burden. You may be saying to me right now, well, Karen, I mean, that sounds great. I would love to release this. I don't even know how. I don't even know how to let it go. I don't even know what to do. What do I even do to begin? Well, I just want to share with you a few things that I've learned from experience that I believe will help you today if you will listen. First of all, 
First of all, you've got to become aware of his presence. See, that day Skip was so focused on his pain. He was, he was laying there so focused on what he, the, the, the pain of betrayal of the people and these things that he was doing. He was so focused on that, he was not even aware of who was in the room. Honey, do whatever it takes to pull away from this crowded, noisy world that is pulling at you. Do whatever it takes to get away, to get away and get into a place that you can just focus on Jesus. Just do, I mean, right now, some of you are watching this and, and, and you're just thinking, well, where do I go? My house is full of people. Well, you may have to do like I do sometimes and just go get, just go get in your car and just start driving. Just do whatever it takes to get alone with God. If you can't do that, sometimes I've gone out into a car. I've gone in my car and just driven to a parking lot of an old church. Sometimes I don't even go to church there. I'll just go out to some of these little country Baptist churches that I love so much. I just go out there and I just park in their parking lot and just get alone with God. Or maybe today you just can, maybe you're sitting in an office right now. You can't exactly leave. But you know what? Just get into a place where you can just lock away because he is inside of you too. And just begin to meditate. And whenever you get with him, whatever that looks like for you, however you've got to do it, whatever effort you've got to make, and it's got to be intentional. Whatever effort you've got to make to get alone with God. As soon as you do, don't just start meditating on your trouble and on what's weighing you down. <clears throat> don't just get alone and start just thinking about all of this stuff that you're dealing with and what they said and what he said and what the situation looked like and, and, and all the reports of the doctor. Don't start, don't just get away and just start meditating on that. How big your problems look and how impossible all of this is. No, 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 no. You get away and you just start meditating on how big your God is and how that his word says with him, nothing is impossible. Just sit there by yourself and just start meditating on those two things right there. It's a good start. Just start meditating on God. You're so big. <laughs> you're so big. You're so glorious. I'm just a little dot on the dot out here on this earth. You made it all. You're big. You're bigger than everything. There's nothing that's greater than you. Your name is above it all. God, you're far above all of it. You're far above all the situations I understand and what I don't understand. You're far above it all. You're greater. You're smarter. You're stronger. You're higher. You're all, you are wisdom. You know what to do about all of these things because, God, that's how great you are. And Lord, I just thank you that because of your might, there's nothing too hard for you. There's no situation you look at and think, I don't know what to do about that. There isn't one single thing, God, not one single thing, not now or ever has been or ever will be, that you would ever look at and think, that's just too hard for me to fix. No, you are that big, God. You know what to do. And then once you just begin to meditate on that, let me tell you what's going to happen. I love this. James 4, 8 says, you draw near to God, God draws near to you. As soon as you make an effort to get alone with God, and it doesn't take long, you just start meditating on Him. That's an intentional effort to draw near to Him. I don't care if you're sitting in an office. I don't care if you're, if you're on a break at lunch. I don't care if it's breakfast. I don't care where you are. It doesn't matter. You can get along with God just by beginning to meditate on Him. And as soon as you start drawing near to Him, He'll draw near to you. That's His promise. As soon as, I used to tell the young people at the ramp in the beginning days of the ramp, it's one of the first things I ever tell those kids, if you pray, He will come. He never disappoints true seekers, ever. He will come. You make the first move. That's why he says, first you draw near to me, then I draw near to you. It's, it's we make the first move. Faith has to move first. And when faith moves first, you release the power of God. Now, once you draw near to him, you stay until he comes. He'll get there. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's longer. You just stay until he comes and pray until you get a word or sense a release. The old timers used to call it praying through. I love that. I learned that as a child from them. 
You pray, as my sweet friend said, I wrote about it in my book. We've talked about it, haven't we? You pray. This is what praying through is. You pray until you touch heaven. And you keep praying until heaven touches you. You'll say, how will I know when it does? You'll know. It's whenever you step from this natural realm into the realm of the spirit. That's where he is. That's where the angels are. And it's not as far away as you think. That's where heaven is. That's where the kingdom, come on, you pray until you touch heaven. You pray until he comes. <clears throat> you pray and then you stay right there when he comes. You pray till you hear his word or you sense. You'll know when you sense a release. <laughs> and honey, when you sense the release, you say, well, how do I pray like that? I love this, Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek for me and find me when you seek for me with all of your heart. Go, I'm telling you, we've talked about it before. Pray, pray like you've never prayed. Sometimes quiet prayers work and they're fine in their place. But other times, sometimes you just need to lift your voice. That's why it's good to get by yourself if you can. Go get where you can just lift your voice. Shout if you need to shout. God, I need you. God, I need you, God. Just do whatever it takes, honey. I mean, sometimes I write down my prayers and I just lift them up to God like that. Sometimes I shout them out. Sometimes I cry them out. Sometimes I whisper them out. It doesn't matter how, as long as it's with all of your heart. In other words, you got to make up your mind. I'm here until I hear from God. That's what Jacob did when he was wrestling with the Lord, when he was wrestling with the angel. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I don't care if I'm here all night long. I won't let you go until you bless me. That's what Janet and Skip did. We're going to pray until you get here. We're going to pray until this thing breaks. On the third night, 3 a.m., he came. Come on, honey. He's worth the wait. I said, he is worth the wait. <laughs> now, when he comes, he's going to come with a purpose. And that purpose for you, honey, is to take your burden. <laughs> when he comes and, he, and you say, Lord, I know you've said to me today that you come to take my burden. What do I do? Release it. Just start saying, God, I sent your presence. And Lord, I'm giving all this stuff to you. I can't carry it. It's too big for me, but it's not too big for you. I'm giving you, and you start calling their names. I'm giving him to you. I'm giving her to you. I'm giving this doctor's report to you, God. I'm giving these financial pressures to you, God. I'm giving these problems in my home and my family right now. These, the people that have hurt me, even in my family, I'm giving it all to you, God. I don't have answers. I don't know what to do, but you do, and you're enough for me. So God, here, I'm just letting you have it. You've got it, God. You've got it all. I'm letting it go. It's yours. Yours, God. And you release it. You release it to God. You let it go. It's, in other words, it, and let me tell you this too. Once you release it, don't pick it up on your way out. Once you let it go, once you let it go, it's his. I like to call it the great exchange. God, I'm giving you this weight. I'm giving you this burden and you're giving me rest. I'm giving you the worry, and you're giving me peace. Remember what we talked about the other day, a few weeks ago, Philippians 4, 6, when he said, don't worry about anything. Instead, he said, pray about everything. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Oh, how I love that word. Oh, how I love that. In other words, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the worry, and you're giving me the peace. And I love that because peace is not just some thing. It can't be bought. Jesus said, I'm giving you a peace the world can't give you. You can't go buy peace. It doesn't come in a bottle, a pill bottle, or some drink you can buy at a bar. You can't buy peace like that. No, it's not for sale. No, this peace comes only from him. And this is who, it's not a thing to buy. It's a person to know. And when he comes, his name is the Prince of Peace. How do you receive peace? Get in his presence. Give him the worry. You pray until his presence comes. And honey, it's like I often say, I pray like that. And I just feel like sometimes here I've gone in there feeling weak and, and, and troubled and heavy. 
went into the place of prayer, just feeling overwhelmed. And when all of a sudden he comes, I feel like Popeye just got handed a can of spinach and I just swallowed it whole. And I feel like I can run through a troop, leap over a wall. Honey, when I leave the place of prayer, I don't leave it like I came. I leave it feeling like I am empowered with strength. Come on, that's who you are. That's the power you've been given. And it's the invitation of God. How could we not do it? How, how foolish we are. I love the old song. We've talked about it before. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I love 1 Peter 5 and 7. He says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. In other words, there's your effort again. It's you move first. You got to move first. First, you've got to cast the care and then you can receive his love. You get the care off of you. You first go to him and get rid of it. First of all, God, I'm not going to, don't pray like I've told you before. Don't pray worry prayers. No, once it's in his hands, once you've got it all off of you and got it's yours, it's yours. Then just begin to praise him. Lord, thank you that you've got it. Lord, I just praise you that you're so big. You know what to do. Lord, I just thank you, God. I just lay him in your hands. I just lay him in your arms, God. And there you've got it. You're strong enough to carry him. I'm not. I'm not strong enough to carry him. I don't know what to do with him. You do. <laughs> Lord, thank you that you can carry my daughter. I just lay her. I just lay her in your arms. You know what to do with her, God. I don't. I just lay this situation. It's fully yours. Now, then just begin to worship him and just thank him and worship him for how good. And then, let me tell you one, this is important though. Once you've given it to him, once you leave that place of prayer and go back to the house and where everybody's at and life is there, there you are back in just the normal of life again. Don't be surprised if you get a phone call all of a sudden and what you just gave to God just got worse. Don't let that throw you. Don't go back and take it back. If it gets worse, don't go back and just take it all back on you. Now I've got to go figure out what to do. It just got worse. Now I've got to pick that thing back up. Nope, nope, nope. You just, if it gets worse, what do you do? Start praying again. That's why, that's why Philippians 4, 6 said, you just got to pray. Boy, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. That means you just got to pray all the time. If that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. But I'll tell you this, it is never God's will ever for you to live defeated and depleted ever. It is never the will of your father for you to live defeated and depleted. Ever. I promise you this. There was never a time. If you would have been around Jesus when he was on the earth, you would have never seen him one day in his 33 years being on this planet that you'd have walked up to Jesus and him just looking like just defeated. No, no, no. It's never his will for you to live. It doesn't mean that, that you're not going to have trouble. It doesn't mean that, that there won't be days of, of great pain. There will be. Jesus said it in John, what, 1633, I believe it is. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Then he said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> as long as you're in this world, you're going to have trouble but you don't have to be overcome by it as long as you stay in the one who has overcome it all. That's your key. How do you stay in him? Stay in the place of prayer. That's how you stay in the, in the presence of your father. You stay in the place of prayer. That's why today, sweetheart, the Lord told me to tell you, you are going to live not a defeated, down, depressed life, but a life surrounded by his peace, you're gonna be carried by strength. I thought today of a little song I've sung many times through the years. It's an old chorus, but so many times it's ministered to me. It just says, I will cast all my cares upon you. I'll lay all of my burdens down at your feet and any time I don't know what to do I will cast all my cares 
upon you, Jesus, in this quiet place. I'm asking you to visit in a supernatural way, my friend, like you did Janet and Skip that night. Father, you told me to tell them you've come to take their burden. I pray that my friend watching this right now will sense your glorious presence. That you are not far away. I hear the Lord saying to tell you, I'm not far away. You felt like lately, I'm far away. You've said, where is God? You've even questioned my existence. I hear the Lord saying to say that. But the Lord is saying to tell you, I am near the brokenhearted. Only believe. Only believe. You say, I don't know how to believe. The Lord says, ask me. Ask me for increased faith. Ask me to help you believe. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, my friend will receive the faith that is hers, the strength that is his, the hope to fight with. I pray, God, for renewed peace today, that it becomes a strength to them they haven't known. I pray, God, they be surrounded with a joy that people say, says that, that doesn't even make sense. They could have that kind of joy. I pray, God, that they just begin to laugh in the knowing that you are greater, you are bigger, and everything is going to be all right. I thank you that you are moving by your spirit to answer their prayer. You are moving God when they don't know what to do. You are moving by your spirit to bring the prodigal home. You are moving by your power to deliver this marriage, to save this family, to bring family restoration, healing in her body right now in the mighty name of Jesus, healing in his body. Raise them up, God, with a testimony that will glorify your name. And I give you praise and we give you thanks for it all tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. My sweet friend, he is where you are right now. Go worship him. Le leave this video right now. Cut it off and just start praising God. Literally start commenting. I want to hear from you. Start messaging me fast. Come on, share this word, share it, get it out to people. People need to hear that he's there. He's here. He's near. He's not far away. I heard him so strong. He's not far away. Get this message out. Comment, comment, and tell me what God is saying to you and what you are believing for. Oh, my sweet friend, he's near to lift your burden. Your help is on the way, and your help has come. I love you. I'll see you soon. I can't wait to read what the Lord is saying through you. Bye-bye.